Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to Building Business Applications Using SharePoint 2010, um, Designer 2010, and BCS. So my name is Chuck Radeep. Uh, people call me Chucks, which is much easier to remember and much easier to spell. So I work at Intergen as a SharePoint solution specialist, and I welcome to my session today. So today's agenda is going to be looking into what is business connectivity services in SharePoint 2010, which you might have heard of, you know, all the good demos you have seen in most of the keynotes, and uh, building solutions using SharePoint Designer 2010, and then looking into how authentication plays a role in BCS, you know, look workflows, how you can use workflows, and obviously we're going to see more demos. So this talk, I'm going to rush through the slides, but we're going to spend more time on the demos and how you could build real-time solutions. So how many of you have used SharePoint Designer 2010 with SharePoint 2010? Do you like it? Will you go back and do the same with SharePoint 2007? Right, so, um, so SharePoint Designer is something that we're going to focus today. I'm not going to touch or open Visual Studio 2010, so no coding. So getting along with what is BCS, so in a nutshell, it's a set of features and capabilities that will let you bring the external data to SharePoint 2010 and Office 2010, so which is Office 2010, the client, and SharePoint being the server. So this external data can be sort of your external web service, you know, serving some uh, probably your custom database applications, or your probably MySQL or Oracle database, which probably you might store some contact details or business critical data. So if you want to bring that into SharePoint, then this is the place that you should be looking into business connectivity services. Um, it provides you read and write capabilities, so you could read data from and write data back to the external data source and as well as it provides some of the out of the box web parts and things like that that you could you know directly go and make use in SharePoint 2010. So what about this business data catalog? Have you heard of this guy? How many of you have heard of BDC? Right? How many of you use BDC a lot in 2007? Do you find it easy? How long will it take for you to build a you know BDC model and then make it up and run it in SharePoint? Right? So so BDC was introduced in SharePoint 2007. It was great. It helped you to bring the external data to SharePoint. So, you know, good starting point. Uh, but there were some uh, difficulties in it. Like, for example, uh, there was no write capability. And there was not much tooling support. You might have to deal with Notepad or probably an XML editor or probably go and buy a third-party tool like BDC MetaMan to actually, you know, help gain productivity. So Microsoft has revamped a lot of things that you would expect to happen in BDC in BCS in 2010. So whatever you thought, okay, um, I want read-write capability, I want a familiar UI, I don't want to waste time, I want good tooling support, I want rich client integration. So everything is available in BCS in 2010. So uh, it's really great to see Microsoft, how, it, how they took the feedback and evolved it into BCS in SharePoint 2010. So, here is how the BC, BCS is going to work. So you have all of your this external data sources, so they can be the WCF, line of business app, or anything, right, whichever not is in SharePoint. So it's going to uh, be presented in SharePoint using the underlying three layers. You can see that it starts with business data connectivity. By the way, the BDC acronym is still there, but it's not business data catalog, it's business data connectivity. So that connectivity layer is going to help you uh, help your model to connect to the external data source, keep track of all the authentication and authorization that you want to have during those connectivity, and then build an external content type repository. So we'll be looking into what is this external content type pretty soon. So that's just uh, which describes your data. So if you say you have a customer, then your customer data would be represented by an external content type. So it maintains a repository where all of your content types stay, and then there's a presentation layer which starts with external list. So you can present a several ways uh, how your external data is presented in SharePoint, so we will also see through it. Uh, but to be just simple, there are, there are something called external list, which help you display this external data. And then you got this whole SharePoint, which interacts with uh, the BCS, which is preferably these uh, three external lists, content type repository and BDC. Finally, you have the client. So not only now, 
uh, that we have accessibility to this external data source, let us take it to the client. So because many of us use Office, and we use Office with SharePoint. So when we do some probably Word or you know InfoPath or things like that, we do still need access to these external data sources. So it extends to the Office client. And finally, we have the design tools, SharePoint Designer and Visual Studio 2010. So what are these external content types? So these are going to be your uh, backbone. Like These are going to be the real thing that describes how your external data is, the schema, the data access capabilities, what sort of methods I have, what sort of permissions do I give to users to actually execute these methods to bring the data back in SharePoint. So it's then once you have this external content type, you could take it to SharePoint and then Office Client. So this is going to be the base with which the BDC runtime, which is a business data connectivity, is going to interact with, and all, as well as the BCS client, who's going to interact and bring the data. So for example, here's a uh, customer uh, external content type. You might have some properties, first name, last name, email, and then you would have some methods, get customer, get customers, update customer, delete customer. So pretty simple. And tooling support. So Microsoft has invested a lot in SharePoint Designer 2010. So if you have used it, you would already know the various uh, user interface changes they have brought in, workflow enhancements. And one of the things they have added is the support to create external content types. So if you don't want to get into development and if you're just looking to connect to several services out of the box, then SharePoint Designer is the way to go. It's so easy. We will see how it is, how it makes our life easier. Um, if you're a hardcore developer, don't like this SharePoint Designer wizard kind of thing, you could go ahead and build your own models in Visual Studio 2010. So we have this external data we have connected to our SQL Server or whatever MySQL, MySQL Server, um, Oracle Server, and we have this data that is going to be brought into SharePoint. So how do we present it? We need something that helps us to present. So we have external lists, which are going to be similar to the regular list, SharePoint list, what you might have been used to. We also have external data columns, so you could add a particular column to a separate custom list and make use of the, you know, you could invoke whatever external data you want to find. You also have some business data web parts out of the box that you could just insert into a page and it will just render them as a list. Um, you also have external item picker, profile pages, which we'll be looking into in our demos, and also the presentation features in Office 2010, which we will also see how it helps integrating into Office 2010. So external list, what are they? They expose the external data. They have full create, read, update, delete capabilities. Uh, you could sort, you could filter. Um, you could also use InfoPath to customize the forms. Um, and of course, you could take them offline. So there are some few limitations on what you could do and what you cannot do. So we will also be looking into them. Um, but taking the data offlineable is something really, you know, a game changer. So you could use SharePoint Workspace take the external data list online, sorry, offline, go home, work, add records, do whatever you want, come to office, click sync, everything goes uh, to the back-end database. Very simple and easy. So what about solution types you could build using this BCS? So you could start off with a really simple uh, SharePoint designer um, kind of model that you build and just connect and do whatever the methods read and uh, you know, present it in SharePoint. And you could probably use SharePoint Workspace or connect to Office in Outlook and things like that. So it's very simple, you don't do much work there. And then there comes the intermediate uh, where you say, okay, now I want to do something more, you know, upsize the forms using InfoPath. Um, I want to use some external data columns and workflows and things like that. So that becomes a little bit complex. You need to know a little uh, bit of how BCS works. Advanced, well, I want to connect to something, my own you know, database, which Microsoft doesn't provide support to. So then I build some custom connectors, uh, try to uh, connect to those databases, bring in the whole thing, I mean, write code for the whole logic to work in Visual Studio 2010. Um, so one of the cool things is that uh, there's a good application lifecycle management going across these three different type of solutions you build. So anytime you could export and import and then add functionalities to it. So if you're a BA would probably would like to work in SharePoint Designer 2010, you do what you want to do, export it, 
and then I can import it again in my SharePoint designer, do add some methods, or import in Visual Studio, you know, make it a custom uh, model that I add more features to it. Right, so enough of talking, let's get on to the demo. So how many of you have already seen BCS? Right. Do you like it? So uh, anybody, wh wh what's been your uh, main advantage of using BCS? How, how do you see with SharePoint 2007 and SharePoint 2010 BCS? Yep. Right. So here's my SQL Server database. I'm, I'm just using the Adventure Works, which you could download from the CodePlex. Um, and I have this uh, Adventure Works LT2008 R2. And then I have this customer database. So we're going to connect to this very simple customer database. So I have my SharePoint Designer opened, connected to a SharePoint site. I'm going to this external content types on the left-hand navigation. And then what it does is it's going to retrieve all of the external content types deployed to my farm. So we'll see what from where SharePoint uh, Designer picks this up in a minute. So it's going to dis display all of my external content types. So remember, these external content types represent the external data. So they have the properties, methods, and things like that. So you can see here I have a custom .NET um, assembly which is built using Visual Studio. And these three, what you see here, are probably the SharePoint Designer ones. So let's go ahead and create external content type. And it gives me this uh, page where I can now enter some options. So name, you know, I can give customers. Display name, I could change it. Namespace, just to, you know, make sure you have a unique uh, content type. And then I have this office item type. So I can have this list. I can create as an appointment, contact, task, post. So I'll, let's go with generic list first. And then here's the external system. So this is where you tell SharePoint designer that, here is my external system that you are supposed to look and bring data back. So now once I click this, I get the option of adding connections. Adding connection is nothing but you're initiating a connection to your external data source. So now I can go ahead and add a connection where I get three options. .NET type, SQL Server, WC of Service. So these are the three out of the box connection types SharePoint um, gives you by default. So if you want to connect to anything else which is not there in the list, you might have to look into building your own model in Visual Studio 2010, right? So, but the, this fits most of our needs. You know, we have SQL Server. We have the fact that you have uh, the capability to connect to a WCF service opens up to wide opportunities. Everything nowadays is a service. If you go to uh, Twitter, it's a service. If you go to um, any RSS feed, they, they give you everything. So you can connect to those very sim in a very easy way and bring back all the capabilities to SharePoint. So let's go with SQL Server much easier for today's demo. Um, database server, so I'm going to give my database server, database name, adventure works, and then I can give it a name. So I'll give it ticket, right? So now I have different three, three different options for connection. I can either connect with user's identity, which would be the logged on user, who I am, um, connect with impersonated Windows identity, so I can impersonate someone connecting as, or a custom identity, wherein for a SQL server would be, you know, SQL login, like SA, the user account. So let's go ahead and do with user's identity. So it's go, going to connect and then bring back all the tables um, and uh, views or stored procedures associated with that database. So there we go, we, we have got our uh, database and then we got our tables can see every table, whatever we saw on the SQL Server. And if you right click on the table you want to create um, methods, so they are operation. So when I say operations, say nothing but the methods that can be executed and um, it brings some result back. So for example, read item method. I can, uh, if you want to read a particular item based on an ID or whatever the primary key is, it uses that read item method. Read list to bring all the data back. Uh, create if you want to create, update if you want to update any you know, item, um, delete if you want to delete any item. Pretty simple, right? That's what you would do in a SharePoint list. You would go and create an item, delete an item, update an item. So let me go ahead and create all operations. So to create, SharePoint Designer will go ahead and give me this wizard where it now uh, expects me to give some extra input uh, where I could, you know, probably uh, say, okay, these are my parameters. So all the parameters 
and their validation and the um, whether they are required or not, it depends on the database. So if SQL Server says, well, this column is required, um, I could not, you can see here that it's already checked required. So if you take this off, then it's going to be a problem when you actually create a record uh, and don't give a value. So it would probably end up saying that there's an error. Uh, you have to give a value for last name. So I'll go ahead, click Next, and then it gives an option for filter. So they can, the external data, what you bring back, can be thousands, two thousands, millions. So you might have to filter them, uh, probably setting a limit. So for example, I can go and say, okay, I need a new filter. We will call it as limit. And then I will choose my filter type as limit. And then I can say it's going to be default based on customer ID. And I want to bring back only 100. So it goes... What this does is, what this does is it queries a database and takes only first 100, uh, whatever the limit you specify here. So that's going to be my default because I have set as, a, set as my default. So now I can finish this wizard. So it goes, creates all these methods for me here, and it also says that this external content type has read, write, and search capabilities, right? So now you can see that you can also search against the external content type, which means that you're searching against your external data source. Here, it's going to be our SQL Server. I save this. So now what we have done is we have created an external content type. We have created some operations that you could execute against them to bring your data back, and we are saving back to SharePoint. So where does this get stored? How this gets managed? So I said that there's going to be an external content type repository, right? So if you go to your central administration, manage service applications. So everything in SharePoint 2010 um, is going to be a service application if you are looking for managing you know, something uh, farm-wide or your web application-wide. So you can see here there are um, many different service applications which you might be aware of. And you can see here there's a business data connectivity service. So this service application manages all of your external content types that you create and deploy in your farm. So once you deploy, it's available for the whole farm. But you set permissions on who have access to and who doesn't have access to. So you can see here we have our customer's external content type deployed. So if you go in here, you would see um, it gives you, you can drill down and see what's the external system that you connect to and what are the different uh, fields that you bring back from your external system. So now once it's deployed here, I am able to go and create an external list. So you could do it again in SharePoint Designer. You could go to your external content type, right click, create external list, it'll ask you for a name, customers, and it's going to create me and give me the list page in SharePoint Designer, then where I can go and probably use InfoPath um, or create custom actions and things like that. So anybody have any questions while this is getting created? Yep. Um, by default, there is a limit that BDC service application stores for, I think it's 2,000 records. So if you go beyond 2,000 records, your external list will say there's some error bringing back records. So you might have to use the PowerShell command let to actually increase the limit or use filter uh, options, what I showed you, to actually maintain a really good you know, connection option because you're going to go and query external data source, right? So that's a... Probably if you are using an internet connection, it's going to be intermittent connection, and sometimes connections can fail. So it's always better to have a filter uh, that helps you to bring only the data what you want, or probably by default, and then let users choose the option what they want. So here's my external list. So now I can see that you know everything is there. So if I go to my site, and I have my external list here. There you go, nice and simple brings back all the records, exactly you know, similar to a SharePoint list. If you click on this, it's going to open the display form. It's going to show me these are the you know, fields. If I want, I can edit them. And if you want, I can go and um, probably change the name. Um, 
we'll put some, uh, probably we'll say bike stores, right? Save it back. So this is going to save back to the data source. So very simple. How much time did we spend on it? Probably if I haven't explained you all this stuff, probably two minutes to build external content type, deploy it, voila, we got the thing working in SharePoint, great. So this is the BCS Hello World sample demo, so it's nothing much. Um, just kind of you open up SharePoint Designer, go to external content types, create an external content type, deploy, and then create an external list. So if you want to create in your SharePoint UI, all you do is you go to more options, you get the option to create content in SharePoint, go to the data, you get the option of external list, you can go and create, and you will get this external content type picker where you can go and choose what external content type you want to be create your list. So you will see all the external content types, and here is our um, customer's external content type that we created. Nice and easy, no confusions at all, straightforward. Right. Uh, I actually forgot to mention something. So at the footer, you can see the bit.ly link. So if you go to that link, you'll find all the resources that uh, you want for BCS, so MSTN links and all the other helpful links that you would um, probably need. So yeah, you can go to there. That's my blog. And if you have any queries, just feel free to email me. So authentication. So now we have connected. It's all good. I'm able to bring back the data. But how am I going to handle for different users, right? So now comes the problem like, OK, I'm the admin. I'm able to get all the data back. But what if I want to give it this to a user, right? So you can uh, have three different authentication modes. So one is the revert to self. Revert to self is using the process account, probably network service or whatever process account SharePoint uses. Pass through can be the logged on user or the BDC identity. When I say BDC identity, it means that, so we, what we did was we brought back all the customer data. So in the customer data, you can say probably first name and last name would be the login for um, my external data source and there'll be a password field which can be a pa you know, for password for the external data source. Single sign on using Secure Store service. How many of you used Secure Store in SharePoint 2010? Right. So it's kind of a single place where you go and um, save all the credentials that you want to connect, um, and then you can use it in different application in SharePoint 2010. So we can make use of the Secure Store service in BCS to connect to the external data source so that you know, it's common for all the users or the groups that uh, want to consume that external data. So this is how it's going to be working. Right? You have the, the, the user logs in. He goes and clicks on the external list, and now the, it, the, it goes, the request goes to the BCS runtime, and the BCS runtime is going to see, okay, what options do I have? Okay, I have the user's identity, so I have to take the user's logged on credentials. And then it goes and tries to the different um, external, con I mean, external data source where it is connected to. So once it's not able to connect, it's going to give you errors. If there is a secure store service configured, then it goes to the secure store service. It creates the ticket and the delegation um, and the tokens that it wants to connect to, and then it gives the token back, and then you connect to the BCS runtime, connects to the external data source, bringing the data back. So it's pretty simple in terms of what you really want. I mean, if you just want to know what it does, this is a simple diagram, but there are a lot of things going on inside. So probably I can take a session on authentication itself, but this is a very simple diagram. So permissions. So once we connect to the external data source, bring the external data back, but you might say that, oh, okay, I want group one to read, but I don't want them to you know, create or write. Uh, but you say, I have group two who should have all the operations. Like they should be able to create, they should be able to um, edit, they should be able to delete records too. So that's where the, you drill down into the permission levels and say only these people have permissions to do stuff. So that's so this is a simple diagram which shows you where you could set permissions and where the permissions are inherited. Um, you could probably look into it by downloading the slides anyway. But yeah, this gives you a gist of how it works. So, you, so if you see there, method. So that method is nothing but the operations. 
So you could set permissions on a specific operation to say that it's only executable by several group or several people. And then the method instance is nothing but the method that refers to the method. So you can say here's a create method, but I have a method called create customer, which is the instance of type create. So we'll go ahead and see how we can use a secure store service. If you feel I'm going fast, you can stop me and sort of get clear of how things work. Not an issue at all. Right, so I'm going to go back to, again, um, my central administration, manage service applications. So you would find the secure store service here. Right, so this service application is going to manage all the credentials you probably want in different applications. So I'm going to create a new target application. So target application is what it refers, uh, probably the name of the secure store ID that you might use in different applications. So I go and say, okay, I need to create um, ticket customer, right? And then I'll give it a name. Just an email. And then I'll say, okay, what would be my target application type? There are different target application types. So if you want every user to authenticate, then you would say I need an individual um, target application type. So for example, I might be given my own credentials to connect to the external data source. So I can just say, okay, I, used, I want to use that credential. So I can go with individual or a group, which means that for n number of users, you will say this is the credentials that applies to that group. So once the group goes and tries to browse, um, it automatically takes those credentials and then passes on to the BCS runtime. So let's go ahead and create the group. Um, yes. And then it's going to ask, okay, what sort of password you want? I mean, what sort of windows or custom? So I'll, let's go ahead and say custom. I'll just say SQL, SQL. Now to ask me, okay, who's the administrator for this target application ID? Let me give it the administrator. And then it says, okay, who are the members that belong to this target application ID that I am supposed to, you know, um, I'm supposed to sort of take those credentials and pass on to BCS runtime. So I can just say, okay, I want this guy. So the, the one thing that you have to understand is even though you would be the target application administrator, if you don't put in the members uh, group, you still won't be able to access it because it's, it's very, uh, it, it looks into the members who are all I'm supposed to give access to and just gives only access to them. So there's another user called Chucks, so let me give it to him. So now it's all done. So what I would do is I would I will log in as Chucks. Right? And I go to my customers. You can see that it clearly says there is some problem, access denied by business data connectivity, right? So what does, what does that mean is that this user doesn't have access to the BDC, to the external content type. So if I go back to central admin, so if I go to my BCS service application, and then look into my customer's external content type, there's an option called set permissions. So if you click on set permissions, you could see that Chakradeep, who was the logged on user, had access, but the user Chucks didn't have access to it. So I can say, okay, I need to give access to this guy, add him, and you can choose what all the rights you want to give. So you can say, okay, I need him to edit, execute, selectable clients, and set permissions. So for the demo, I'll give everything. So now if I go in here, I might have to close the browser and reopen again. So what's going to happen is it's, it does get permission to business data connectivity, but then what happens is it should give me in, probably in a minute's time saying that it's not able to access the external data source. 
because what we have said is connect to the external data source and user's identity, which means that it takes a log on user, logged on user. So I am logged on as tax, but I don't have access to the database in the back end. Right. It has to give me the error message that I'm looking for. Oh, I'm able to connect. Right. That's not good. So coming back to a secure store service, what I'm going to do is I've created my secure store, but I haven't set credentials to it. So what I can do is I can go and set credentials. I can say, well, here's my username, password. Right, so now I have set my secure store service target application ID with some credentials on it. I can go back to my SharePoint designer, go to the external content type, and click on the external system, you get the option of selecting your authentication mode and giving the secure store application ID. One thing that really confuses me is that now if you go and try this database access provider, you have the option of connecting to Oracle. So um, I think using the secure store, uh, secure store service, you could put your credentials in and probably connect to Oracle, but I haven't tested it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I want to impersonate custom identity and then give a secure store ID, which is take it customers. So now it's going to go ahead, check whether everything is working. It's going to save those information. And there you go. Now it's using the secure store service with the SA user account and the password that I specified. So now typically what will happen is if this user goes, goes ahead and tries to connect, it's using the SA and the password that we specified in the secure store service. Very simple. Right. So moving on to something called associations, right? So we are dealing with database tables, and all these tables are going to be related with one another, you know, probably two or three tables. And you would probably like to bring the data back to your external content type. So that's where the external content type associations come in. They just create a relationship between two different external content types. So you can see here that I have a sales order table in my database, um, and that's going to come as a sales order external list. But you can see that I have a customer ID, which is related to a customer's table. So that's uh, being related to that customer ID 29847. Now, ideally what I would like to see is, you know, instead of this customer ID being displayed as 29847, I would like to see his last name. So that was much easier for me to locate, oh, this is my customer. But it would be very difficult if I just have my ID being shown up there. So what we really want to do is we want this guy to get transformed to this guy, right? So that's, that's our main goal. So how it is done? We use association. So we say that the sales order external content type that you created for your sales order external list is related to the customer's external content type with the field customer ID. So once you relate that and say that the title field, the, probably the last name, is going to be the title. Title is something that uh, SharePoint would identify and say that is the field I want to display. So once you said that, SharePoint understands, now there is some association going on. Let me, bring it up, right? Let me bring it up for you. And that's how we will see this name. We'll see in the demo very soon. So what type of associations are supported? Um, one to many associations, and that should be based on a foreign key. So what we saw at the previous slide was we had a customer ID, which is going to be a foreign key with a customer table. So one to many associations with the foreign key is always supported. Unsupported associations, many to many associations, and associations with multiple related external content. So you, you cannot have multiple external content types with multiple associations and then try to uh, relate them using SharePoint list or whatever that is. So let's go ahead and see a demo. So here's my sales order header table. So this guy is going to have uh, all the details along with the customer ID. Let's see, where is it? 
Um, right, here it is. So we have the customer ID, which is related to the customer table that we just brought into SharePoint. So let me go ahead, do the same step, create external content type, say sales order, So I can use the same connection that I created before. So I'm going ahead saying sales order. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say I need only two methods, right? So I'm going to say I need only read item method. It's going to ask me what you want, return parameters. And then I'm going to say I need a read list. So to create an external list, you need two methods, two operations defined. One is a read item and the other one is a read list. So once you create these two methods, it displays you a message that you can now create an external list from this external content type. So pretty simple. Whenever you do something, SharePoint Designer tells you whether you are ready to go ahead or not. That's pretty handy. So I'm going to save this. Right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my customers. And you can see that it displays all the fields here. So I said you, want, you have to set some field as a title so SharePoint understands that that is the field I'm supposed to focus and you know, show to the user. So if you click on any field, at the ribbon you can see there's a set as title. Right? So once you click that, it says as site title. It took me ages to find out this, really. I was going ahead and seeing all the options, but then it was just there on the ribbon. Yeah. So you can save this. So now if you go and create a sales order list, you would probably, what you would see just what you saw in the customers, right? What we just created. There isn't any association uh, that has been created with the sales order list. So let this get saved. Anybody have any doubts? Any questions? Yep. Um, you cannot create any calculated fields on external lists. That might have to be coming from your external data system. So what we're doing is SharePoint doesn't store any of this information, right? So all of this information is stored in the external data. So whatever you have done in your external data, SharePoint picks it up and just presents in probably in a really, you know, web page SharePoint list method. So if you have a column in your external database, to say that here's a column that becomes first name comma last name, then SharePoint will pick it up and display it. So you cannot create or you cannot tell SharePoint um, to do this way when you're using SharePoint Designer 2010. But if you're using Visual Studio 2010, you're writing the code. You're the master of your code. You could do whatever you want. Right, so this, so let's go ahead to the sales order. Um, so how do I switch to that place where I created all those operations, right? I created, I went ahead, created ad connection, did everything. So again, if you click on a content, external content type, and then in the ribbon, you can see there's an operations design view. To click on that, it takes you to the screen. So this screen is called operations design view. So just uh, remember uh, that you can go back to that screen where you were creating the operations. So if you right click the sales order header, right? So this is a table where I want to present the name of the customer instead of the ID. So I have to create an association here. So if you see here, there is an option new association. I go ahead, it gives me a dialog box now where I can say, this is my related external content. So if you browse, it gives you um, the ability to choose a content type whichever is deployed. So I want my customers. So once it's selected, you select your customer, it says that, okay, here's a field that might be related, right? So that's the only field it will probably give you. Oh, it's giving everything, but it's identified the customer ID is the one that's related. So now I can go ahead and you can see that it says that you need to identify which is a field that matches with the identifier customer ID. So I can go ahead, select the customer ID, map to identifier, and you can see I have the customer ID 
here to choose from. Very simple and just straightforward. And then I can again define filters. And again, I can come here, the customer ID, and I can say foreign identifier. So this is something called foreign key. I can say select from a foreign identifier, reference external content type. I can say the customers associated, the sales order, right? So now I have, this is my referenced external content type field, customer ID, and associated with this external content type that I'm creating. Nice and simple. So once you know what is actually uh, associated in the backend database, it's pretty simple to come and create the association here. So I can save this information. Any questions? Yep. Unfortunately not, you have to create it manually. Um, some options would be to create a view and bring that view back. So you could probably connect to a view as you can see that you have an option to connect to a view. So there are a few um, rules that you need to follow if it's a sort procedure or a view. But once you do that, you can probably have a grouped data and bring it back. Like for example, if you want to connect to CRM, which works a lot with views, right? So. I can go to my sales order, create list and form. So give me a new list name, sales order. Um, click OK. So by the way, you could say create info path form, go and design the form, how much, I mean, the way you want. Um, but I'm just not doing that now. So I've created my sales order list. It's all looking good. So let me go to my website. Here's my sales order list, right? Because I'm logged in as Chucks. So let me log in back as admin. Oops, there's some problem. Um, so the best way if you do end up with this problem is download the ULS Viewer, right? How, how many of you have used this ULS Viewer? Great, so a few people. So the address to download is code.mstn.com slash ULS Viewer. So if you want to go and download this, Right. So if you go to this address, you can download this ULS view. It's pretty good for uh, finding out what actually is happening. So let's do that. I'm not sure what's the error. Open from ULS, right? So it goes ahead and goes to 14 Hive, gets the logs, and then it starts monitoring all the real-time logs that's been um, given to that ULS log file. So let me go and refresh this. Right, and I get this correlation ID. Then I can go here. It gives me, you have a new ULS notification. Right, you can see here our error is Microsoft's accused of service application failed to retrieve credentials. Target application not found. That's, we have it here. Oh, is it? Ah. Right. Good spotting. Thanks. It wasn't hard to get what the error was using this ULS viewer, right? So it's pretty easy, I mean, useful tool. So if you, it's better to download it and give it your IT pros to find out what the errors they are. Right. So let's hope it works now. So there'll be a lot of caching going on with the BCS client and BCS runtime. So that's why I think previously when we tried to reload the list, it just worked because it was taking the credentials from the cache. And now, since it has gone a few minutes, it just throwed that error. 
So let me close this, open back again, go to my side. Still. Right. I'll change it to user's identity. You know, you try so many times to make the demos come right, but every time there is some small problem. Do you find it interesting? Good thing to put SharePoint 2010 on and do some external data connectivity stuff. Right, it's working, so probably this will work. Yeah, it worked. So now if I go and probably view an item, you can see now I have the option of seeing the name instead of the customer ID, right? So it's pretty simple. But I don't have the edit item or create item. This is because we didn't create a method. We didn't create an operation to edit this item. So what we can do now is we can go back, and go to this external content type, operations design view, and sales order header. See, I need to update, right? And just click finish. Saving, saving, great, save. So now if I go back to my external list, oops, really not good. Get errors in the demo. There you go. So for a quick, I'll just create another list. We had similar errors when myself and Steve led for presenter for SharePoint conference. So we got similar errors and we were like, oh my God, it's not working. And then Steve had to say some jokes to actually make people entertain. So let's hope it works. It works. So you can see now I have an option to edit an item. And if I edit an item, You can see I get the option of now choosing the customer I want. So I can go ahead and say, well, I want this guy. There you go. Get the name. Save it back. Goes to the list. But one annoying thing is that you don't see that name here. So that's something. Um, that's, that's how SharePoint Designer works and external lists work. You can't see the name in the column that actually in the external list until you go to that item and see it in display form or edit form. So that's something that's a limitation. Probably they will come up something with the next version or next uh, service pack. I'm not sure about it yet. Sorry? Um, I haven't done that off the box, but you can use that external item picker in your custom application and say multi-select equal to true, and you can select multiple items. But I haven't done it out of the box in SharePoint Designer or um, in SharePoint UI. So yes, uh, um, currently it's not available. I don't know how to enable it too. Yeah. So let's go to the next topic. Search. That's supposed to be the you know holy grail. I mean searching external data without much difficulty. Just go and click some option, do some options in SharePoint, and it'll search the external data uh, for the external content type, right? So what you do is you create a new content source. So you say that my new content source is a line of business application data, and you select your external content type that you want to search. And then you make sure that permissions are set. The reason uh, that you want to set permissions is because the account that is crawling the external data source 
needs to have access to crawl that external data source. So obviously, um, here it worked because the logged on user had permissions to go and get data from. So that's how we saw that every data coming back to external list. So for search, similarly, you need to have given the permission for the search crawler account to go and crawl the external data source. Uh, profile page is nothing but a page where uh, this external data is presented probably in a, in a good way so users can understand what the external data is. Um, so there's a separate setup that you do for profile pages. If you go to my resources link, you will find a link how to create these profile pages. And finally, you have to crawl. So very simple steps. One, two, three, four, five. Five steps. We'll see a demo. So I'm not going to crawl. I'm going to show you how I have done it, because obviously it's going to take time to crawl, um, you know, perform a search and do the crawl. So I'm going to go my manage service applications, search service application, and in the content sources, you can see that I've created a content source called BCS, right? And this BCS is going to crawl my business data. Con uh, so you'll get an option here to select the line of business data, and then it gives me the option of, okay, what data sources you want to crawl. So I already have two data sources that I have crawled and you know, searched, uh, re searched, and the ticket one, probably the one we created now, so I can include them and do a full crawl again. And this is the content source that you create. Then you could include this content source in your scopes. Right, so once you create them, so what I've done is I've created a new rule saying include everything from this content source. So you can see that it has crawled and said there are 985 items ready for you to search. So I can now go ahead, go to the site search. So this is a pre-baked site where I have done everything so that it works. So I can go and search for probably Catherine. And it's going to give me probably a few results. So the reason I'm choosing Catherine is because I'll tell you why. So now if I click on the item, it takes to me a profile page. So this profile page is going to display the entity, the external entity, as well as any associated entity. How cool is that? Right, you go there, you search for this guy or you know for this item, you get that item, and you also get the associated data immediately displayed for you. So you know know that okay, I have this customer associated with the sales order ID. Very simple, very effective. So it's pretty simple. Um, nothing much other than these uh, four points that you need to take care of. And make sure you always check the permissions. That's the key thing. I have failed myself a lot of time just because um, the crawler account doesn't have access to the um, external data source. Right. So external list and workflows. So this is going to be a shock for many that um, you can't associate a workflow or you can't create a workflow for external list. So that's. That's something, um, the reason behind it is your data is not stored in SharePoint. So obviously, it's managed by an external data source, maybe SQL Server or Oracle. So that guy knows how to handle this external data more than what SharePoint can do. So when something happens in the external database system, probably you should have a mechanism to tell SharePoint that that has changed, rather than SharePoint going and finding it out or doing something really weird things to know what has happened. So that's actually not in control of SharePoint. So that's why you are not able to create a workflow which you might just say that start this workflow when a new item is created. Well, where is this item created? External content, I mean external data source. So there's no way to notify that. You could build your custom solutions that can get notified, probably a web service and things like that. But out of the box, it's not available. But it doesn't mean that you cannot use the external data item in a workflow. So if you have a site workflow or a custom list workflow, you could say, depending on a value, go and update this external data. So you could certainly do that. And once you associate this external content type, I mean, use it in a workflow, 
it runs under process account. So if you want to overcome and run with own credentials, you have to go with Secure Service. So what we did, we created a target application ID, we set special permissions and credentials, um, and then the external data source will use those credentials to connect to the external data source. So that's the way to go if you want to use external data items in workflows. So let's go ahead and see a little bit demo. I mean, I, again, I have uh, done the demo just because to save some time. I'll close this site. I will open the intranet site. So what I have here is similar to what we did, sales list and uh, customers list. So it's going to give me all the data back. So you can see here that I have some status, five, six, and online order flag. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to build a site workflow which says that if the status is five, change it to yes, online order flag to yes. If it's six, you know, just change it to no. Simple conditions. So what I've done is I've created a site workflow. Check online order, right? So I've done everything in SharePoint Designer. So you can see here I have this. You can go and edit this workflow. Right, so there's my rule. Um, log workflow started, then log the sales order ID. So I have an initiation form where I can give the ID, um, and then it checks the ID, um, gets the status based on that ID for that record, checks whether it's five. If it's five, change the status to yes. If it is six, change the status to no. It's very simple. So let's see this workflow in action. So here is our five, seven, one, seven, seven, four. So let me go ahead. Oh, it's the wrong side. So let me open again the list in another tab. Seven one, so I can enter seven one seven seven four and start. Yeah, it does take some time to do stuff. Uh, how powerful is this PC? Well, I'm running 8 gig RAM. And um, it's just a touch smart PC, so but it's good. So you can see it's completed. Um, yep, yeah, so that's the one. There you go. We also have the visual representation of the workflow. Probably it will work. I haven't checked. And you can see all the things that happened here um, in my history. Cool. It does work. So you can see everything, whatever that happened, uh, the actions, different actions that it took place. And now if I come back and reload the sky, probably I should get online order flag to yes. Right? So you can see how now external data can be used in workflow. So you can have a site workflow. Probably you can have a timer job that actually executes a site workflow and you know checks the external data system some, for some values and updates them probably you know for your business process. So it's pretty simple. And you also get this really cool visualization in Visio. Right. So for the last demo, I think we just have a little bit of time to do it. Blob reading blobs. So what are these blobs? They might be documents, they can be pictures uh, that you store in your external database. Uh, so how do you read those using BCS? So this is added in 2010, was not available in 2007. So it's still in its version one stage where you might have to do a little bit of tinkering around the model XML that the SharePoint designer generates. We'll see a demo quickly. It's not going to take much time. I'll switch my site. I'll go to my external content type. I'll go create. So I'm going to get photos 
um, from AdventureWorks database again. I'm going to say, um, sorry, AdventureWorks. Oh, I should have not done that. I should have clicked on tables. Go to the product photo. Um, read item. Then read list. So you can see there's no option to create uh, a method to read the blob because SharePoint Designer doesn't have that option inbuilt out of the box. So what I have to do is I have to save this guy to the BDC repository. And then go to this external content type, click on products, photos, and there's an export BDC model. So now you can see how I can export the models, right? So I can export this. I can save this in my desktop. And now if I go to my desktop, I can open this in an XML editor. So I'll just open in Visual Studio. I, I promised I wouldn't open Visual Studio, but this is just to edit the XML, right? So you can go ahead and see this um, XML um, in your free time to actually see how SharePoint Designer generates and puts all this. So this is similar to BDC in 2007. Uh, who have worked with BDC will be familiar with this XML. So here you can see it defines all the methods, connectivity options. So you can see here's a method, and then the parameters in those methods, and a method instance that would consume that method, what you defined. So what we need to do is we need to add a method for reading this blob content. So I have the XML pre-baked here. It's, it's a bit uh, typing and things that you need to do, but um, it's actually pretty straightforward. I create a method, photo read stream, give some options, and the query that I need to perform, so I'm getting large photo, and then I create an instance over here of type stream accesses. So this is the out-of-the-box method available for you to use. Once I use this method, I say this is a parameter, return parameter, which I've described above, and things like that. So if I want to explain, it would be I need more time, but just to give you a fact that if you go to my resources page, there's an MSDN article dealing how you actually uh, it explains every step what you do here. So I can do this, save this model, um, go back to SharePoint Designer, delete this guy. I don't want this guy. Right, and then go to Central Admin. Oh, I can go to BCS, I have a bookmark. So it's gone now. Select import, and I can import my model that I just built. Right, so now what we have done, we have exported, we have added some customizations, and now we are importing back. It's pretty simple, right? And it, it helps, like someone can build some model, then they can give it to you. You could add some extra stuff you want to do and import it back in SharePoint. So now I've imported it. It's generated my um, external content types. You can see here we have product photos. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my site. I'm going to edit this page. Oops. Oh. Insert web part, business data, and you can see that a lot of out-of-the-box web parts that I can use. And these are available in SharePoint Server Enterprise Edition. So I can choose business data list. It's going to add me the web part and says, okay, open this to configure your external content type. And now I can go here, choose my external content type. Vera, what did we do? Product photos, right. And now you can see there is an, once it loads, there is this option to say display stream fields, right? So that guy now knows that, okay, there is a stream accessor method that I need to load and let me hook it up for you. So that's when it does this. And now if I click okay, and then save this page, so it will load everything and you can see that I got the field large photo 
and it says click here to download. So now if I go and download, it's just going to open up that picture. Right? So it's pretty simple. It's just that little bit of that XML coding that you need to do. Now, if you still want to have it displayed in a column in your list, there is a way to do that. Um, I'll, prob I'll, I'll be writing an article on that very soon. Uh, you could use uh, HTTP handlers to find out what has been queried. So you can just say whenever this is getting queried, bring me the image back, and you can write your custom uh, handler method that actually displays a message. Um, if you subscribe to my blog, I'll probably be writing that pretty soon. Yeah, so this is how you read blog content using BCS. So that leaves to BCS limitations. I think there's no time. So I will leave it up. It's a lot of resources I have linked to. And also, you can download this slide. It's pretty straightforward to go through all the limitations that you have. Um, remember that this is version 1. Some things might change. Some things may not change. But depending on what you could handle in SharePoint, certainly I think there will be some updates coming through. Um, I'll leave it to you guys to read through it. Uh, there's some related content. You could go to some sessions. Um, and I'll just leave this for five minutes or 10 minutes just to know what is available in what versions. Um, thank you very much for coming for my today's session. Uh, if you are a developer, tomorrow, one of the last sessions, I would be dealing on building custom BDC models in Visual Studio 2010. Thank you.